Okay, so Yocasta and Oedipus left the stage. They're now waiting for the, uh, the herdsman who was accompanying Laius on this journey. He was the sole survivor. He'll be the one who has information. In the meantime, the chorus launches into an ode, um, <clears throat> one that a lot acknowledges the role of the gods. Um, they say, may destiny ever find me pious in words and deeds. They continue on, now giving an injunction for human behavior. They say that uh, if a man walks with haughtiness of hand or word and gives no heed to justice in the shrines of gods, despises, may an evil doom smite him for ill-starred pride of heart. The Greek word there is hubris. Okay. So they're acknowledging a reverence for the gods here. And they're locating the human action within that divine sphere. Um, their song ends and Yocasta comes out. She's bringing garlands. She's offering um, symbols for her prayer to grant Thebes escape from this curse. Um, a messenger arrives. This is not the messenger they were, they were waiting for. This is someone new. And he says he's bringing good news, right? We should definitely be clued in by this point in the play that good news is never going to be good news. Um, he's a messenger from Corinth. And he says, I have news that will bring you pleasure and maybe a little pain. Um, he doesn't realize how much pain, of course. Um, and the, the messenger says that Oedipus has been chosen to be the king of Corinth. Um, and uh, Yocasta doesn't understand how that can be the case, but then it turns out that, of course, Polybus has died. Oedipus's father is dead. Um, and so Yocasta tells the servants, go run and get Oedipus. Um, let him know that his father has died. And, of course, this is supposed to, again, allay Oedipus's fears, right? Oedipus, you always worried that you would be the one who killed your dad. Um, but look, he died of natural causes. He didn't die from you, so everything's okay. All right. So they go through, and uh, and Oedipus then gets the news that his father has died. Um, and look at Oedipus's excitement here at ten twenty-three. He says, "Oh, look at how foolish these oracles are. The Pythian hearth. Why should we look at the birds screaming overhead?" Um, the, the oracles all said I would kill my father, but look. He died of natural causes, um, and I stand here, and I've never laid a hand on him, okay? So, again, these oracles are worthless, all right? Um, and now Oedipus says, oh, but there's still the second part of the oracle, which, you know, one part was I would kill my father. The second part was I would lie with my own mother, and he says that to her, um, and Yocasta replies with, with something that ends up being a cruel irony here. She says, um, as to your mother's marriage bed, don't fear it. Before this, in dreams too, as well as oracles, many a man has lain with his own mother. Um, in many ways, you can kind of see that as, as an ancient statement of what Freud would re uh, describe as the, the Oedipal complex, this idea that that human beings in their dreams, male human beings in their dreams um, and subconscious have this uh, desire to lay with their own mother, this, um, this Oedipal longing. This is probably the clearest ancient statement of that. Okay. Now notice the, the messenger is listening to all this and he registers, you know, and he asks, you know, Oedipus, like, wait, what woman is making you afraid that you might sleep with her? Um, he says, well, my, my mother, Merope, right, Polybus' wife. Um, and he tells the, the messenger about the, about the oracle. And the messenger says, wait, that's the fear that drove you out of Corinth? Um, and, uh, and the messenger responds and lets him know, like, I'm going to free you from this fear, sir. Um, of course, now we're beginning to see, though, that by freeing Oedipus from this fear, 
he's going to introduce him to an entirely different and even worse fear. Okay, so um, further down, after a, a continued exchange, the messenger becomes clear and says, Polybus was not your father. He was no kin to you, um, which means Merope was not your mother. Okay, so and the messenger says, look, he, you are a gift that he took from these hands, all right? Meaning the messenger was the one who gave that baby to Polybus and Merope. Um, and that's the baby that grew up to be Oedipus. Okay? And then so he asks, Oedipus says, now wait a second, what, what's going on here? Um, you were found, the messenger tells him, you were found in twisting thickets. Um, and the messenger says, I was in charge of flocks, um, and another man saved your life. And now another clue, the noose tightens further. Um, Oedipus asks, what ailed me when you took me in your arms? And the messenger says, your ankles will be your witness. Your tendons of your feet were pierced and fettered. Um, and that's where you got your name, Oedipus, which means swollen foot. Okay, so uh, the messenger says, look, I don't know how all this happened, but there's someone who gave you to me, and that person would know, okay? That person would know where you came from, and he was one of Laius's men, so we need to find him, okay? And now it turns out, the chorus responds at 1, 4, uh, 11, 14, that the peasant you sought already was the one is the exact same one who gave the baby to this messenger. So think about that connection. Make sure we're clear on that right now. Um, the sole survivor of the murder of Laius at the crossroads is also the same servant from Laius's house who gave the baby to this messenger. Um, so the messenger who's already on his way with information about that killing is now going to be asked about this baby that grew up to become Oedipus, okay? Um, Yocasta here, right, I mean, her mind must be absolutely spinning because she knows about this baby. She knows about the baby who's, uh, who was exposed to death after having his ankles pierced, okay? Um, and she says to her husband, to Oedipus, do not hunt this out. If you have care for your own life, what I am suffering is enough. It seems now that Yocasta knows, um, or at least has a very strong an inkling of what is about to be found. Okay? Now Oedipus, of course, completely um, misreads this and says, Oh, Yocasta, you're just upset that you're going to find out I was a slave um, and that I'm not of noble birth. And she says, Look, that's not it. Just do not do this. Okay? Um, and she says to him, O Oedipus, God help you. God keep you from the knowledge of who you are. God keep you from your self-knowledge. The Greek word, and I'll spell this out for you in class too, is auto-anagnoresis. Auto-self-recognition, self-knowing. And now she leaves, she leaves the stage with these final words, Unhappy Oedipus, that is all I can call you, and the last thing I shall ever call you. So her closing words to him, she says, are going to be the last things she ever says. Um, definite foreboding in those words. 